Hey there, I know some of you might feel the same way about this, but one pot meals are some of my family's favorite meals to make. Just because all you have to do is throw everything into your pot or your pan, cook it up, and then there you go. Your dinner is done in a jiffy. So I hope you enjoy these five new recipes today and let's go get started. We are kicking today off by making this rice and beef dish. So to the pan on my stove, I added in one pound of ground beef. Next, I'll toss in a tablespoon of minced garlic, followed by one yellow onion that I diced. I broke that ground beef up with my meat masher, and next I'm going to add in our seasonings. So for the seasonings, toss in a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of paprika, and a teaspoon of oregano. Cook the ground beef through at this point. This recipe is so simple. Now that our ground beef is cooked through, I added in my two cups of uncooked rinsed jasmine rice, or you could use white rice, along with three and a half cups of beef broth, or you could use veggie broth, a 12 ounce frozen bag of broccoli, and then one can of Rotel. Give this a really good stir and bring this up to a simmer and let this simmer covered on your stove for about 20 to 22 minutes. You do wanna stir this occasionally while it's simmering, just because you don't want the rice to stick to the bottom of your pan. And if the liquid line does get too low while this is simmering, just feel free to add in about half a cup more water at a time until your rice gets nice and tender. Now that our rice is nice, fluffy, and tender, I'm going to add in one cup of shredded Colby Jack cheese. I gave this a stir, let the cheese melt down, and then it's time to serve it up. Here's my plate of food. We actually had extended family over on this night when I made this meal and they thought it was absolutely delicious, they told me. And I believed them because my family really enjoys this meal too. Even my little toddler loves this one. This one is for all of my meatless meal friends out there. We are making this amazing vegetable pasta. We're going to start out by cutting up our vegetables. Dice one yellow bell pepper, a red bell pepper, a yellow onion, and then cut a medium-sized zucchini into bite-sized pieces. The last thing you'll do is slice eight ounces of white mushrooms into smaller pieces. Now that we're finished with our vegetables, I'll set them to the side. Over to my large Dutch oven, I added in two tablespoons of olive oil. Once my oil was hot, I added in a tablespoon of minced garlic along with the peppers and onion that we cut up earlier. Go ahead and saute those peppers and onion around for about four to five minutes to soften them up. Once they start to get softened, you are going to add in the mushrooms and the zucchinis that we just cut up. Cook those mushrooms and zucchinis for about four minutes to soften those. My house was smelling so good at this point. We're going to add in the remaining ingredients now. Three tablespoons of tomato paste, two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, two and a half cups of vegetable broth, two cups of marinara sauce. It's not this entire jar, and if you have leftover in a jar like you will probably for this recipe, you could always freeze any leftover marinara sauce, just like in a bag in the freezer or a Tupperware container, or of course you could just stick it in the refrigerator if you'll use it sooner. Next, I added in our half a pound of bow tie pasta. I gave this a stir and I let this simmer covered for about 12 to 15 minutes. I, of course, did stir this occasionally while it was simmering just because you don't want the pasta to burn to the bottom of your pot. But after this was through simmering and my pasta was nice and tender, I added in my one cup of mozzarella cheese. Of course, the cheese is optional. If you're not a cheese fan like me, you certainly don't need to add it in, but if you know me, you know by now that I just really love cheese. Here's what dinner looks like. This meal is packed full of so many nutrients from all of those delicious vegetables, and we definitely did not miss the meat in this meatless meal, but if you do miss the meat in this meal, you could always add cooked Italian sausage to this recipe. This sausage and orzo soup has to be one of my all-time favorite soups ever. To my large Dutch oven, I added in a tablespoon of olive oil along with a tablespoon of minced garlic, one yellow onion that I diced, and one pound of sausage. You could use any type of sausage you like. You could use the sweet sausage or the hot sausage. Just break the sausage up at this point and cook it through. Mm -hmm. 
Now that our sausage is cooked through, I'm going to remove any excess grease in my pot and I'm just doing that with my large spoon and wiggling a paper towel around in there until I think I got it all. Now I'm adding in my pepper, just a dash of that, two teaspoons of Italian seasoning and one teaspoon of salt. Next, add in your four and a half cups of chicken broth, followed by two 14 ounce cans of petite diced tomatoes. I definitely recommend you using the petite diced tomatoes compared to like the regular diced tomatoes for this recipe. I just really like how small they are. I gave this a stir, scraping all those flavorful bits off the bottom of my pot. Then I added in my one cup of dry orzo. And if you don't typically cook with orzo, this is what it looks like. It's almost like a mixture between rice and pasta, kind of like a large rice, but has the pasta texture. I just find it at Walmart. But I let this simmer on my stove covered for about 10 minutes, stirring it often. Here's what it looks like after that orzo is cooked through. I'm going to add in my three cups of fresh spinach. I'll stir that in and then I'll put the lid on top and let the spinach wilt for about two minutes. Spinach takes like no time at all to wilt down, so now that it has wilted, I'm going to add in a third a cup of half and half, and then after you stir that half and half in, it is time to serve it up. Here's what dinner looks like. Like I said before, this has to be one of my all-time favorite soups ever. It is packed full of so much great flavor. This soup also reheats nicely from the refrigerator and the freezer. I just served this alongside of an extra dinner roll that we had from the holidays. Now we're making this Italian chicken and rice. To my large Dutch oven, I added in a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of olive oil. Once the butter has melted down and the oil is hot, I added in my one yellow onion that I diced along with a pound of chicken breast that I kind of cubed into bite-sized pieces. Season this with two teaspoons of paprika, two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, a couple teaspoons of salt, and a dash of pepper. Give this a stir and let this chicken sear for about four to five minutes. You don't need to cook your chicken completely through at this point because it will continue to cook here in a moment. But after that time was up, I added in a tablespoon of minced garlic. I gave it a stir until it was fragrant. It took about a minute. Now I'm adding in one cup of rinsed uncooked jasmine rice, or you could use white rice, with two and a half cups of chicken broth. I gave this a stir and I let this simmer covered for about 17 to 20 minutes. I did stir often while it was simmering. Now that my simmering time is up, my rice is nice and fluffy. I'm going to add in the last of the ingredients, a half a cup of heavy cream, a third a cup of Parmesan cheese, and a little bit more salt and pepper. I gave this a stir. Once the cheese melted down, it was time to serve it up. This is not your boring type of dinner at all. This rice and chicken has so much great flavor. All the ingredients mixed together were just really perfect. I served this alongside of a side salad with spring mix, dried cranberries, carrots, and some croutons. And then I used this Olive Garden Italian dressing for the dressing. Now we're making this hearty ham and potato soup. We're going to start out by cutting up our vegetables. Peel and dice three large russet potatoes. Slice two cups of carrots into smaller pieces. Slice two ribs of celery into smaller pieces as well, and then dice one yellow onion. Set these vegetables to the side. Now over to my large Dutch oven, or you could use a large pot. Add in one tablespoon of olive oil and one tablespoon of butter. Once the butter has melted down and the oil is hot, add in the celery, carrots, and onion. Saute those vegetables around for about four to five minutes to start to soften them. After that time is up, add in a tablespoon of minced garlic and stir that garlic around for a minute. Now add in the potatoes that we cut up earlier along with two cups of cooked ham that you kind of cut into bite-sized pieces. I just used some remaining ham from the holiday 
holidays or I also like this ham if you don't have any remaining ham you could just use this I like to keep one of these in my freezer these ham steaks are a very good price and they are full of flavor they're just super great if you're on a budget as well but I gave this a really good stir now you're going to add in a third a cup of all-purpose flour stir that flour around until it kind of becomes a golden color Now add in two and a half cups of chicken broth, add it in slowly and stir it while you're adding it in. This is going to help so the flour doesn't become clumpy in this recipe. Now that we have all of the broth in the pot, we're going to add in our two teaspoons of salt and one teaspoon of pepper. Bring this up to a simmer and you're going to let this simmer covered for about 10 to 15 minutes or until your potatoes are fork tender, of course. Depending on how large you cut your potatoes is how long this needs to simmer. But once my simmering time was up, I gave this a stir and then I tested to see if these potatoes were fork tender with a fork. But now that they are fork tender, I'm just adding in my three cups of milk. I'm going to let the milk heat through. You don't want to bring this up to a simmer or a boil with the milk because you don't want to curdle the milk. But after a couple of minutes of just letting this heat through, I served it up. We topped ours with a little bit of shredded sharp cheddar cheese and pepper. This soup is so hearty and delicious. It has a wonderful, rich flavor. It is out of this world good. Thank you guys so much for being here for me and I have plenty more videos like this on my channel for you. So make sure you're subscribed down below the video so you don't miss any more in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.